Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker Studio tutorial. And I'm super excited today because we are going to expand on our knowledge of Game Maker Stor Studio and build some doors. So, this is uh, right now I'm building it as if it was inside of an RPG type game, but the same concept would actually work in a platform game, such as, oh, like, uh, like a Fez or something like that. So, this is a pretty, when I first was learning about doors, it was really tricky for me, uh, but I've simplified it quite a bit for you guys. And I mean, when I was first learning Game Maker Studio, <laughs> it was a little tricky for me, but I've simplified it. So this is a really quick tutorial. So let's jump right in and get started. You can see I've created three just 32 by 32 uh, sprites, one for the door, one for the player, and one for solid objects that's just gray. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create an object and we're going to call this object player and we're going to assign this um, the player sprite to it now one thing we're going to do is go into the player step event and really quickly i'm going to program uh, a movement code so let's do uh, move move the player this is just going to be real fast Var r equal let's see right equals keyboard check vk right and i'm actually going to copy this i'm also using my new microphone so i hope it works out uh my favorite thing about this microphone is that it's a condenser microphone no i'm not like a microphone expert i don't really know a lot about them actually but i do know what a condenser microphone is and basically what it means is it just has a smaller recording radius so sounds that are further away it doesn't pick up very much it only picks up sounds that are close and it would be really funny for you guys to see my stand right now in fact i'm probably going to take a picture of it and throw it on my facebook page because my stand consists of a whole bunch of rags, a Greek yogurt container, and the entire Lord of the Rings series stacked up to make it high enough for me. I'm trying to get a stand. I, I didn't really plan this too well. I've got like a little stand, but I need something that's going to be a little bit higher, work out a little bit better for me. So <laughs> that is uh, quite the interesting sight to see my microphone. So let's do, so I've just grabbed every single input. So the right, left, up, and down. Now we're just going to move. So if keyboard, let's see, if right and not place meeting um, x plus 4, y, object solid. And we haven't created that object yet, but... Um, do that and we will move the player four pixels over plus equals four awesome and we'll copy this and if you haven't ever programmed a basic movement before here you go this is a basic movement uh, example that you can do as well X minus I'll make sure and change all of these. Y minus 4. And this is going to be in the upwards direction. So we want to use Y. And in fact, I'm going to copy this over this right here. And just change it all to plus. And down. Of course, we want it to be down. Awesome, so our player can now move inside of the room. So let's create a new room with this button right here. And I'm just gonna make the background uh, a green color for now. I want it to be not quite that saturated. So uh, make it a green color. 
some sort of a grass. I don't know. Okay, now let's put our player in the room and let's create a new object and we're gonna call this object solid. We'll give it the solid one and we'll create another new object and we'll call this object door. Now, one of the things that's important is I'm choosing to make my player object persistent and not put him inside every single room. Another alternative is to put him inside every single room, but um, I'm for this example, I'm going to make him persistent so that he just appears in every single room. So that's this little checkbox right here. Pull up your object player and then click persistent right here. And that just means no matter what room you go to, your player will be in that room. So this, we're going to call this uh, room outside. Okay, that's a good looking room. And then we're going to create another room. And I'm going to make the background like some sort of a brownish color, like a dark brown. I, I don't even know. It's got to be darker than the door, so let's go with that. And we'll put our player. Oh, let's see. I don't need to put the player inside here. And we will call this room house. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our outside room. Let's move the player over a little bit, actually. We're going to build a house. Oops. We don't want two players. So let's grab um, the solid. And we'll stretch this down. I don't know. Like that. We'll grab our door. Put it right here. I'm going to stretch it over um, two just to make it easier to get into. And we'll grab another one of these. Stretch it right here. And we'll put another one of these and stretch it down like this. So that looks like a house, right? Pretty much like a house. And we'll press our green check mark and we'll come into the uh, we'll come inside of the house. And I'm just gonna put our solid and stretch it, you know, mostly. Whoa! Okay. It's a little weird. Um like this. Just grab them and stretch them. I love the stretching feature inside of Game Maker. And then we're going to grab our door, which, okay, it is a lighter color, which is perfect. And we'll put it right there. We've got two doors. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to go into the door object. And we're going to give it a create event. And we're going to initialize some variables here. Okay. And we're going to call these variables um, player x equals 0, player y equals 0, and door room equals room 1. So what do these, th sorry, not room one, room outs room outside. So what do these variables mean? Well, this variable is going to be where the player needs to go to in the new room, his X and Y position, his or her, her. And then this is going to be the room that they need to go to depending on the door. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. But let's go get into the player object and we're going to add a collision event with the door. So um, collision with the door. And what are we going to do? Well, go through the door. And we're going to call, uh, we're going to do player dot x equals other dot player x player not dot, sorry, player x, player y equals other dot player x and player y. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the new position that the player needs to go to from the door. And I'll show you how that works in a second. And then we're going to go to the room. So room go to other dot door room. Okay. Easy enough, not too complicated yet. 
Now we're going to add a new event and we're going to uh, add an other and this is going to be game start. And if this, if your player isn't in your first room, then you're going to have to do something other than game start. You might have to have a special, you might have to use globals instead of just player underscore X and player underscore Y, player under global player underscore X and you might have to use globals to do it but this will work for this example so let's do for the game start we want to do player well let's see set or create set the variables and we're going to do player x equals x start, which is just your start position, player y equals y start. And then we're going to, that's all. <laughs> Nothing too fancy there. And then we're going to do one more. And this is going to be another other event. And this is going to be room start. So when the room starts, we want to move to the player's x and y position. So move to the new position wherever that is and we're going to do x equals player x and y equals player y and that is it that is all we need so that's not too complicated now what we need to do though and this is a little bit trickier is we need to come into here and we need to set these doors to we need to set some variables specific to these doors. So the way you do that is you right click on the door and it has a creation code right here. So we'll come into the creation code. And what we're going to do is player x equals something. I don't know what it is yet, so I'm going to put zero. Player y equals something as well. Um, room, let's see, door, room equals room house right because when they go inside this door we want to send them to the house so whenever you create a new door you have to set these three variables now this x and y position is going to be where we want to put the player in the other room so let's go to our other room and find out where that's going to be so if we come inside the house we come down to this right here and maximize it you can see down here, it has my X and Y position for the mouse. So if I move over this, it gives me an X and Y position. So we're going to want to do 512, and the Y position is 448, but I'm actually going to subtract 32 from that, which is 416. So 512 and 416. So if we come into our other door, the outside door and we change the creation code and we do 512 and 416 we should now be able to go through this door and have it take us to the other room so uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's run this code and make sure that it works so the other door still won't really work. So we're going to have to go fix the other door. And so, but let's move over here. You can see we're moving around on the screen. That works fine. We can't move inside the house. But if we come up to the door, boom, it brings us inside. Now that's kind of a funny spot. We want to be more in the middle of the door, like right here. So I'm going to subtract 16 from that number as well. So let's go back into our outside room right click on here go to creation code and instead of 512 I'm going to subtract 16 from that which is going to be 496 is that right yeah hope so anyways now let's go into well let's see our other one is going to bring us to about where let me maximize this so I can get the X and Y coordinates. It's going to bring us to 448 plus 16, which is going to be 464. 
464 and 160 plus 32 is 192. So 464, 192. 464, 192. Right click creation code. 464, 192. I had to write them down before I forgot them. And we're going to do uh, player x equals and player y equals. Now, the important thing to know is that these numbers are going to be different depending on where you put the doors. So if you're following this example, your doors might be in a slightly different place than mine, and you're going to have to kind of mess around with these numbers to get it just how you want it. So room, uh, let's see, door room equals room outside. And that one should work too now, I hope. So let's run this one more time. And I think these doors should work. We should be able to go in and out of this house. And there's no sort of door animation or anything like that. But if you wanted to do that, that is possible. So let's go inside the house. Looks good. Let's go back out. And perfect. We can go inside this house and come right back out again. So uh, that tutorial worked actually really pretty well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that this video helped you if you were trying to work on how to do doors. Uh, remember to make this player persistent so that he shows up in every room. And uh, you guys have been awesome, super patient with me this last week while I've been really busy. I apologize that this video took a little longer to get out. I've got another one on the way and I'm excited to have the new microphone. It's got me into it and super stoked. So be sure and like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends, check out my Facebook page. It always, I, I'm at like 401 likes on Facebook or something. So if you guys want to swing over there and give me a like, that'll help me out a bunch. I'd like to hit 500 here soon. So thank you guys. I'm working hard on Grain War just as a little side note. So that's part of the reason you haven't heard much from me. But I will talk to you guys later.